Algebra 2, 1.1a, Rational and Irrational Numbers. I'm going to take a look at my fish here. We've got all these fish, and if you look at the smallest one here, he's all the natural numbers. He's the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And whole numbers include the natural numbers, and that adds zero to its list. Integers include whole numbers and natural numbers, and now we're adding the negative and positive numbers to the list. Rational numbers include all of these types of numbers and fractions and decimals. Then we add irrational numbers. Those are the ones that cannot be written as a fraction, and they don't repeat as decimals. And real numbers are all of them, including the irrational numbers. Okay, so these are all subsets of this bigger set of all the numbers, okay? So, one more time. Natural numbers are the counting numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whole numbers include the natural numbers and add a zero to the list. Integers are all the natural numbers and whole numbers and they add positive and negative numbers to the list. Rational numbers are natural, whole numbers and integers and now we add fractions and decimals to the list. The irrational numbers are the ones that can't be expressed as a fraction, and the decimals never end to repeat, and they don't make perfect squares. And real numbers? All of the above, okay? So, the most important set of numbers in algebra is a set of real numbers, and each real number can be represented by a point on the number line, including pi, which is right here. So even though pi doesn't repeat and it seems to go on forever, we know it's approximately right here on a number line. And the square root of 2 is not a perfect square. It's an irrational number, but it's approximately right here on a number line. So whether they're rational or irrational, they can still be located approximately on a number line. And 0, that's not positive or negative, but it is an integer and it is a whole number. All other sets of numbers, all of these sets of numbers here are subsets of the set of real numbers, okay? So they're all subsets within the group of real numbers. Rational numbers, they can be written as fractions and decimals, and their decimals will end or repeat. So one-third is 0.33. That just keeps repeating that 3, doesn't it? And for this one, 0.142857, the next digit would be 1, and then 42857. All of these keep repeating. 1.25, well, that's 1 and a fourth. That's a rational number. But irrational numbers can't be written as fractions, and as decimals, they'll never end, and they never repeat, and they are not perfect squares. So here's some examples of some irrational numbers. Now, a new word for you is the repetent. It's the part of the decimal that repeats. So for two-thirds, 0.6666, the repetent is the 6. For this one, the repetent is the 3. For this one, the repetent is 142857. See? So if it's got a repetent, it's rational. So here's rational versus irrational. The prefix ir, ir, means not. So it's not rational. And we can even write 0 as a fraction. It's 0 over 1. That makes 0. 1 fourth is 0.25. That decimal ends. 1 third is 0.33. It repeats, right? A half can be written as 0.5. That ends. Even the whole number 20 can be written as 20 over 1 as a fraction. So if it can be written as a fraction or ratio or as a decimal that does end or repeat, then it's rational, okay? They end, they repeat. See? But the irrational ones, hmm, they have no repetent. So for pi, it just keeps going on and on and on. And there's a team in Japan that calculated 1.24 trillion places for pi so far. Square root of 2, no repetent. It keeps going on and on and on. There's an E in math. That's Euler's number. It's used to study the uh, in compound interest, and it's approximately this decimal that keeps going on and on and on. And this represents the golden ratio. This is the Greek letter for the golden ratio. And 
it continues on and on and on. And this is an architecture and it's in nature. Leaves actually grow on a plant using the golden ratio. So if it can't be written as a fraction, and it never ends or repeats as a decimal, there's no repetent, and it's not a perfect square, it's irrational, okay? So also remember from last year, from Algebra 1, absolute value, that's just how far a number is from the number line, uh, from zero on a number line. So the absolute value of five, a positive five, well, that's five hops away from zero on the number line, and the absolute value of negative 5 is also 5 hops away from 0. So its absolute value is 5. So just remember that absolute value is how many hops or skips it away it is from 0 on the number line, regardless if it's negative or positive. All right? Our next video is 1.1b. We're going to talk about adding negative and positive numbers. And you really should already know how to do that for Algebra 2. But this is a review to get you running, OK? And if you look in this video's description, there's going to be some links that'll help you. There'll be a link for what makes a rational number back from Algebra 1, and I'll put a link for terminating and repeating decimals in irrational numbers from Algebra 1. All right? Just check this description, and you can click right on them. All right? Okay, let's move on and talk about positive and negative integers. I'll see you there. Bye.